I'm Mark Rutten. Welcome back to Nomad Boat Building. This is the 2.4 meter project. Now in the last video we got our combing done. Now there's one more major hurdle that we need to do towards the completion of this hull and that is to attach the keel. But before we get to that there's another thing I want to do. And that's often the case in boat building. There's always one more thing that might be easier to do now than later. So the part of the adventure is trying to figure out what that is. So in this case once we add that keel, the boat's going to sit about a foot higher than it currently is. Now that's problematic for doing anything on the deck. And the one thing that we still need to do on the deck is a bunch of varnish. Now the more I get done now, the less I got to do later. And right now it's at a more convenient height than doing it later. So we're going to lay on a whole bunch of coats. And while we may damage this varnish while we flip the boat over and deal with other things related to the hull, at least we'll get the bulk of that work done. And we can always add one more finishing coat to touch things up if we have to. So without further ado, let's get into some of my tips about varnishing. Here we go. It's time to get on to varnishing this thing. Uh, I've got some more jobs to do, but the sooner I can get going on varnishing, the better. Because we really need to build up a lot of coats. And uh, the longer I wait, the longer it's going to take. And so uh, when we're talking about building coats, we don't need to worry about... Uh, making sure everything's super fine because they're really just building body. It's not until we get our, to our final coats that we need to really worry about quality of finish. Now this deck right now has just got a few coats of epoxy on there. We've got it sanded out to about 180 which is perfectly fine for moving on to our varnish. We don't need it to a really fine fine level of sanding because a little bit of tooth is just fine and these fine little scratches that might show because there's some dust on here all disappear once the varnish goes on. To prepare the surface it's a good idea to scrub it down first. One thing about epoxies is as they cure they produce a film called amine blush and it's just it's part of the curing process it doesn't happen right away it happens a little bit slowly the longer you leave an epoxy surface exposed the more that amine blush will present itself now I've used West System 207 hardener which is supposed to be free of amine blush but it's not a terrible idea to just go ahead and deal with it as though it has an amine blush because it's not going to hurt and it doesn't take much time and it's going to get rid of all this sanding dust anyway. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And the way you get rid of amine blush, it's super simple. You just need hot water. And it doesn't need to be crazy and boiling, but just hot water out of the tap is fine. And you need to use a, an abrasive pad. Now my go-to are 3M 07447 general purpose hand pad. So they're not super cheap. I buy them by the box, and I don't know what a box costs me, but I know the individual pads run about a buck sixty-five a piece, Canadian. And they're this sort of burgundy color. You split them down into four pieces usually, or even eight pieces, and so they're reasonably economical. And I use these all the time, especially when I'm finishing, and I use them in between coats of finish. And the reason for that is a lot of the time I'm trying to build up a finish. I don't want to remove material. I want to leave it behind, but I do need to make sure I get a mechanical bond between layers. Even if I'm working within what we call the green window, which means there's a chemical bond that will occur, I still use one of these because when you degloss a surface, you can see what the hell you're doing. If you try and paint wet onto a glossy surface, you, re you really can't see what, what's going on half the time. It's very um, frustrating and it's hard to see what we call holidays which means those spots that you miss. If you abrade the surface a little bit it deglosses it and it makes it very easy to spot those things. And uh, if you're working within a green window and trying to use sandpaper it'll peel up on you. and It'll uh, load up that sandpaper with bits of um, finish that isn't fully hardened and it renders the sandpaper useless pretty quick but it doesn't really do that so much with the uh, scotch Brite pads so they're really useful for that. Even when I have sanded a finish, I'll go over it with a scotch Brite pad afterwards because it picks up all that fine dust and it hits those tiny little areas that your sandpaper couldn't get into. So for doing this, just a pot of hot water. And just give it a good scrub. Now you might say, wait a minute, you're about to varnish. Why are you getting it all wet? Well, don't worry. By the time I get to preparing the shop for that coat of varnish, getting everything ready, this will be plenty dry. 
and I usually chase down the finished surface with some alcohol before I varnish anyway, and that helps to get any uh, moisture out of that surface. So we scrub it down with one pail and I keep a second pail of clean water in a rag. And we mop that up and give it a rinse. And it's not a bad idea to give the whole thing a good wipe down with clean water after you've done your scrubbing anyway. There we go. That's all it takes. It's very simple. Do an area, move on to the next. And the main reason I'm wiping it right away is because it's easier to do it now before all this dust dries on the surface and it just makes it a bit harder to wipe up. And while this might seem like a bit of a hassle, I'll tell you one thing I've never regretted is working on a really properly prepared surface when it comes to finishing. And what I have regretted is not properly preparing a surface when I'm finishing. So this is time well spent uh, because the flip side of the coin is if you don't spend the time to do the job well, you will spend that time and then some trying to fix it afterwards. And the last thing you want is coat of finish not working out properly. Definitely don't want a coat of finish that won't dry because getting that off will be a bugger. Now once we've scrubbed down that hull to get rid of a mean blush and after we've prepped everything for varnish we still want to give that surface one more wipe down. My preferred material is usually alcohol but you could also use naphtha or even water if it's a warm day. So I always strain my varnish with a uh, very fine cone filter. I use ones that are made for spray finishing. I keep a funnel on hand to keep in the paint can just so that I got somewhere to drop that filter and when I'm done with whatever's left over with this pot of varnish goes back into the can but goes through the filter on the way. So next I need to figure out what kind of consistency my paint is at and thin it if necessary and I pretty much always have to thin it. There's only a few brands of varnish that I've ever come across that are already thin to brushing consistency. Looks like we're very close to that right now. Okay, so I'm gonna try and describe how I determine that. Watch the varnish as it leaves the stick. When I pick up some varnish here and rake it across the stick, what I'm looking for is for that varnish to basically plunge off that stick very quickly, almost instantly, like you don't even see it. Now watch carefully. Do you see how that varnish creates sort of a thin sheet hanging off that stick? I call that curtaining. I want to thin it until that curtaining just stops happening and no more. It lingers maybe just a hair longer than I would like it to. So I'm going to just give myself a little dribble. I use deodorized mineral spirits just to keep the smell down as much as possible. So I am working in my house basically. And I'm using the Tonkinois varnish because they claim that the fumes are not harmful. See if we can get you in closer to see that. See that last little speed with which that falls? I'm going to thin it out just a hair more. Just a couple little dribbles. We don't want to go too far. But if it's thinned out enough, it brushes on really easily. If it's not thinned out enough, I find that it is you really notice a little bit of a struggle at getting it to spread itself on the surface that you're working on. We'll go over to the, uh, the hatch cover and we'll test it there.
Now if I've got the consistency right, this goes on really smooth and I don't feel any dragging on my brush. It feels just about perfect. I wouldn't want it any thicker than this. Now here's the thing about varnish. You can lay it on in any direction you want. It really doesn't matter and in fact it doesn't kill you to go ahead and brush it on in two different directions just to make sure that you're covering all your brush strokes and avoid what we call holidays. So there I've come to the center line and now we tip it off. Boom. I like to tip it off sort of in a consistent direction that's usually you know I often tip it off in line with the wood grain but because our wood grain is going in all directions here. I'm just going to go laterally across the, this uh, hatch here. Now I'll put some more on. Now I'm going to tip off towards the, in a way that crosses the last batch, so just crossing over that center line a little bit. Usually you have to do a bunch of ducking and dodging to try and see if you've gotten everything and not create any holidays. Just going to finish off by making sure my edges are clear and coated. That looks pretty good. And so all those brush strokes will quickly just level themselves right out if you're using a good quality varnish. But you know what? I can already see all kinds of bits of dust that are in there. Where it's coming from is beyond me, you know, because everything was clean. I used a tack rag on everything, but still it's there. So I've just kind of resigned to the fact that I cannot seem to get away from it in this workshop. Okay, over here. I'm going to show you sort of a technique for dealing with these oddball shapes. So I'm using a round brush. And for whatever reason, round brushes are good for grabbing onto contoured surfaces like rub rails and things like that. So I don't use a round brush really anywhere else, but when I've got sort of very, sort of very contoured things like this, I, I grab them. What I'm doing right now is I'm doing my best to try and feed some varnish up underneath this lip here, which is, it's not going to really get it quite there, but we'll get started. I'm not worried about my brush strokes or anything at this moment. Just laying that varnish on. I've got plenty of working time with this varnish. Okay, and now I've just got a little bit of shop rag here, clean one. I'm just going to dip it a little bit of it in varnish, like so. Now we're going to get up underneath that lip, and I'm going to pad on some varnish. This is a technique you can use. People don't think about it very much. You can't put the varnish on as heavy when you're padding, but it, you can still do it. So there I basically reached up underneath there to where my brush couldn't reach. Now that I've hit that, I'm just going to go over it with this bristle brush again, just to make sure I've tipped out as much of it as I can. Here's the side of the lip and we'll finish off the lip in a minute. When I do the inside, we'll bring it up over the top and finish the lip off. Right now I'm just concerned about making sure I don't have any runs or sags coming down the inside of that combing. I'm just going to do the whole combing right now because I got the round brush in my hand. And once I got the combing done, I really don't need this brush anymore so I can put it to the side and ignore it.
whatever reason, I always like tipping off with a backhanded stroke. I don't know why, it's just something that feels most comfortable to me. So whenever I'm starting varnish, I'm always starting at the right hand end of things and working my way around towards the left. Get going on the combing here. You notice I'm kind of rolling off the inside of the uh, lip here a little bit just to make sure I'm crossing the line from this rounded contour to the flat contour because I'm going to switch my flat brush for the inside of this. I don't have to. I could, I could do it all with the round brush, but flat brush is a little more efficient. I'm really, really happy with the way the lip of my combing turned out here. It was kind of a pain to do, but well, it wasn't that much of a pain. But the combing in general, it looks like such a simple thing, and yet I had to actually put in quite a bit of effort to get this combing done. And that's just the way it goes with some of these projects. The simplest, the things that look simplest in the end can often be considerably more effort in the doing. Okay, let's go get our other brush. Okay, so I'm using a badger hair brush. I like badger hair brushes a lot. It's a nice fine bristle. I know a lot of people just swear by foam brushes and they throw them away and I don't know, I've never been able to get a feel for a foam brush. Never ever. It always felt kind of floppy and ineffective to me. If it weren't a badger hair brush, I'd probably just use a hog bristle brush. And the, the round brush I was using that appears to be hog bristle. But... The varnish doesn't really care which one you use, because it'll flow out just the same. However, I think you can get it a slightly more even coat with the badger hair, just because it's a finer bristle. Of course, you got to be willing to spend a few bucks. The badger hair brush will probably run you about 30 bucks or something like that. But I don't throw them away. I get it quite a bit of use out of them before they're played out. Some people nurse their brushes and try and you know, get an entire career out of one brush. I really don't see the point of that. Yes, you lose a few hairs through the early portion of the life of a brush, but frankly I've got some that have got a lot of mileage on them and they actually wear down and start getting stubbier and stiffer and harder to use. So I get to that point, I retire them and I grab a fresh one. I don't exactly clean my brushes, to be honest. I have a very simple system in which I store them in raw linseed oil. I give them a quick little swizzle and some spirits or some thinners in order to get the bulk of the uh, whatever paint or varnish I'm using off. And when I'm doing paint, I do actually do a, a quick and I do a bit of a clean with paint because I don't want to contaminate the linseed oil with too much pigmented stuff. But I keep a separate container for paint brushes and, and for varnish brushes, and they just live suspended in linseed oil for their whole life until I'm until I'm done with them. Just covering the whole bristle and you just give them a quick clean before you paint with them. It works great. So I'm just worried about getting this edge here. 
careful not to put varnish all over our hardware. So that's doesn't look cool. Although I should probably tape off that hardware, but I haven't bothered. It's easy enough to work around it. So I'm just going to do the deck in stages here. So I'm going to see I've come down a couple of feet from the bow here. Slight tipping strokes. When you tip off, you're always sort of gliding up and off your varnish with so that your final touch is whisker light. Notice I'm starting right here in the dry area. So that what we call the wet edge, this bit right here, is not does not have a heavy body to it. So at this point, I'm gonna to have to quickly work down one side and then come back and hit the other side. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Should be using my round brush on this corner actually. And I got my, this is my hole, a little hole for my shrouds. Just want to make sure that that's perfectly sealed up. There's going to be a little bit of hardware that goes into there. We're always looking for stray hairs and bugs and anything else that can mess up your finish. Get that out of there as soon as you can. So 
you know, this is my wet edge from before and I can, it's already sort of flowed out. It's perfectly flat right now. So now I've got to work back into it, which is a little less than desirable. It'll be fine. So here was my wet edge and I had to work back into it, but I still needed to sort of try and tip out this way. So you've got to find that spot in, in the middle where you can do a, a graceful touch down and lift off. I can see just in here, it looks like a couple air bubbles right where the varnish settles into the corner. So I want to get those out. the hair. Now this is one of the reasons I like having a stick on my um, my paint pot here is it's really handy when you do have to pick up a hair to have something you can use to get rid of that hair. So you notice as I'm tipping this out, I'm going in, trying to go in tight to my combing and pull straight out from there. So these are like boundaries that you can use to help make sure that you're getting a nice even result without the, uh, the appearance of brush strokes starting in the middle of something. This feels a little heavy to me, so I'm just going to tip it out one more time. Okay, I'd say that's looking pretty good. And we're done for this coat. Okay, now here's the last thing I like about using these paint pots. You can't do this with a stadium cut. Okay, last little job. There's all of our leftover varnish. I'll just leave that to drain. And then I usually gas my leftover varnish in the pot with some propane. So I'll put my propane torch in there and just squeeze off some gas 
unignited, of course, and, and propane's heavy, so it'll settle down just on top of the varnish and it'll prevent oxygen from getting at it and it'll prevent it from skinning over. It's not a 100% guarantee, but it works pretty good. As long as you don't go and shake up the can or anything like that, you're just careful to move it gently to its uh, storage spot and, and you can seal it up properly. If the lid can't seal up, the gas will eventually just escape anyway. Okay, so over here in my very crowded paint room, I'll just take my brushes and I give them a quick little plunge into some solvent just to get the bulk of the varnish off of them. And then all my brushes I drill a little hole in the handle and I make these little wire hooks. And then it goes in here into a can of linseed oil and that hook prevents the brush from sitting on the bottom. So in the linseed oil, the oil is poured so that it just covers the uh, bottom of the ferrule. And that's it. That's cleaning, what I did right there. That's all I ever do. And when I go to use the brush, I'll do the same thing. I'll give it a good solid swizzle with spirits to get the linseed oil out and give it a spin in my, in my bucket. So down here is my solvent bucket. Right now there's about a couple inches of solvent on there and the rest of it is just solid paint. This thing's half filled with, well that's probably like 20 years, 20, 25 years of painting right there. So I spin my brushes off into there. If I have dirty solvents, I'll pour those off into there. And then I'll leave it. And when I haven't been painting for say a month or something like that, or a couple of months, depending on what's going on in the shop, I'll actually, all the paint will settle down and I'll get just clean solvents on top. So I'll pour those off into a jug. And so I keep a jug of used spirits around and they're pretty clean. You know, I'll put a strainer on it, make sure no junk gets in there. And it's not, it's not absolutely dead clear. It's got a, it's a little discolored, but for the most part, it's very clean. And I just use it for cleaning brushes. So I, <laughs> I bet I don't go through a gallon of, of solvent in a single year. I just keep recycling it. It might even go a couple of years before I actually buy a gallon of solvent. That one is, had those brushes in it a few times and I'm done with varnishing on that boat for the next little bit. I've got a bunch of coats on. I'm planning to leave it at this point and let that all cure up. So we'll pour off that. No need for it. Drop the lid on it. I drop the spray on there and then all my I paint pots, I drain, and I reuse those. And it's not for any reason then I can reuse them. And once I've got a coat of paint on them, they're, you know, they're nice and clean actually. And so I get a bunch of uses out of them. And uh, the tin cans, so long as there's not a bunch of junk on the bottom, I'll get a couple of uses out of those before I toss them in the recycling. In fact, here I've got a brush that has paint on it and does need a decent cleaning. So I should have used those last solvents that I had there. Even when I clean paint brushes, I'll tend to just drop them in a can and leave them suspended for a couple of days. And most of the paint will fall right out of those bristles. As long as you don't stir it up when you pull that brush out. Look at that, that's not, this is white paint on this brush. And that, uh, those solvents look fairly clear for the most part.
Okay, folks, well, the boat's looking nice and shiny. Now we're gonna put multiple coats on there, somewhere between six and 10 coats. And what I like to do is put a few coats on one day after another, and then I'll let it sit for a few days, let that varnish harden up, and then try and do a thorough sanding to try and flatten everything out, and then do that again. Ultimately, we're gonna keep going until the varnish looks like it's got enough body to it, and of course, free from blemishes. Now, my customer is fairly forgiving, so if we've got the odd little bits of dust or a hair here or there, he's not gonna freak out. And he's a good conscientious boat owner, so I know he's gonna keep revarnishing this as time goes on. He'll be on top of it, and it's gonna get done outside, so the varnish is never going to be perfect on there. Uh, what we like to say is, does it look good from the back of a galloping horse? <laughs> Which is kind of a low bar, but you understand what I mean. So that's it for today, folks. Please join me next time. I want to thank everybody who helped support this channel on Patreon. If you can help us out over there, please do. There's a link in the corner or down in the description. And everybody else who likes and subscribes and shares and all that stuff, thank you too. I will see y'all later, folks. Ciao for now. Okay, who sees the problem here? Who sees the problem? And staring at me like it might as well be glow in the dark. Right? There. See that? That is where something dinged the boat. And now we gotta fix it because that's gonna haunt me. Everything else is nice and flat. There's this one little spot. So I'm gonna show you how we fix it. I've got some cyanoacrylate here. I'm trying not to hit it directly. I'm just going to let that set up. Okay. Good. Now, with a hard sanding block. It's still soft. Check it. Wait for that alcohol to flash off, see if we still get the same little divot. Still the tiniest little bit of a hole there. time. I'll tell you what my problem is. The problem is I can't leave the damn thing well enough alone. I put the glue on. And then I'm too anxious to sand it off and I won't let it cure properly. I keep getting a divot in the middle. One last time. This time I'm just going to walk away. Actually that's so small now we're going to leave it alone. Varnish will fill that.